I thought I would take a moment at the beginning of this video to answer a commonly asked question, which is where or how do I get the ideas for the creations that I make? I would say that 50% of the time I get my ideas because of a product that I've purchased and I'm thinking, okay, how can I use that? The other 50% of the time comes from images uh, that I've saved on my iPad of things that I, I love. And, you know, I, I don't know, I've got hundreds of those. So I thought I would show you an example here of a process that I use. In this case, with this little box, to me it looks like a ring box, I have a picture of a ring box that I captured from, I don't know, Pinterest or Facebook, here's a picture of it, that I thought was just really beautiful. Now, the first thing I'm deciding here is what kind of knob I want on the top. I'm not necessarily trying to match exactly what that picture is. If, if I were, I would just use that simple round knob I just showed you. I want something a little different. I never copy anybody's work exactly. Um, it has to be my own. So I'm trying to decide here. I really like that dragonfly. But if I were to keep with going with the picture, that ring box was made using metallic foil or Shabin pieces. I have several. There's a spring mix there and a fall mix. The bunny looks really cute, but you'll see in a minute why I decide, or I'll explain why I decide not to use the bunny this particular time. The bird, I just didn't like it with the metal leafing, but the rabbit sure looks good with it. But the post on that rabbit is really tall, that's what I'm checking there. And additionally, I want a mold behind it, and it's just a little too tall, I think. This dragonfly is going to fit better with something that is a mold that is rather round, like a medallion. So I'm going to go with the dragonfly. So that totally changes now because the dragonfly is not going to look right with metal leafing unless I go with some kind of just plain silvery metal and that's just, I don't know. That's not of interest to me. So I'm going to be doing something a little different. So now I'm studying the dragonfly. It has kind of an off-white or vintage white paint on it, but the metal part, if you look closely, I can center it in the picture there, it's definitely a metallic, but not a shiny metallic. So that makes me think, okay, what kind of products do I have that I can use to create that metal part. So I start thinking and while I'm thinking I'm prepping the product. Always need to sand. Now the other thing in this picture, look at it again, it has a smaller base with some more trim. Can I create? Can I add? A base to that to make this little ring holder taller well yes I can these two little things here are just some cheap packaged ornament things that I got from Hobby Lobby at Christmas time uh, I don't ever use them for for their purpose which is basically to stick a picture in the in it but I use them for other things and in this case I can glue the two together to create something I can then attach to the bottom of the ring box and I can put trim around that that would resemble similarly uh, to the ring bo box picture. So gluing it together using my clips so that it will dry nice and tight and we will continue with what I'm going to use to create that metal finish look.
couple of comments here. Pentart's Deluxe Paste is a wonderful product. It's water-based, it's very creamy. Uh, there's so many things that you can do with it. You can even put it on glass. I applied it with a brush, as you saw, but you can also, after applying it with a brush, you can use a little sponge brush to create some texture in it and then sand it back. Um, looks very much like metal, uh, but it, I mean, it's very elegant. It's not super shiny. It just has a hint of a little sparkle in it. And looking at this again, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but the metal part does have just a little bit of shininess to it. Really, I mean, it, it's exactly like, I think, the Deluxe Paste. Now, clay. I've been asked a lot of times about clay. Uh, how come I tend to prefer the Hardy Soft Clay now over IOD's clay? It's not that I prefer it totally over IOD. It's just that the difference for me is in the application. IOD's clay is a great clay, but it does shrink and it will crack. When I'm wanting an old world look, like for example in this Nutcracker uh, tag that I made, I did the clock out of IOD's air dry clay because I wanted that old world look. But the rest of the castings I did in the hardy soft clay. I like the hardy soft clay for a number of reasons. It doesn't seem to shrink, it doesn't seem to crack, and it has this elasticity to it. I mean, I did this yesterday afternoon. Cast it and painted it. And you can see we still have a lot of flexibility. Now gluing it together here, uh, my joint may show up a little bit more because the clay is drying or dried but I can still push it to get that to go together. You might wonder why I was testing dry brushing the deluxe paste on, especially on my good, my good casting here. But I wanted to see how it would work with a dry brushing technique. When I was doing it on the left side, I had too much paste on and the more paste that came off my brush, it was looking correct over here on the right side. The other reason I was testing it was I was trying to decide, okay, if this dry brush is okay, uh, then I can paint first and then dry brush with the paste. But if it won't dry brush very well, then I'm gonna have to paint the whole thing with the paste and dry brush with the paint. This, when it was made, I am pretty sure that, I mean, it's metal. So the metal is the metal, right? The metal is the gray part there. And they dry brushed with the paint. But I don't have a metal surface. I have clay. So I'm doing it in the opposite way. Another thing about these pastes, they come in, I don't know, seven or eight colors. This one that I'm using is anthracite. Looks a lot like iron. And I have this one that I haven't used yet. I need to use it because it's gorgeous. Truffles. Isn't that pretty? I normally dry brush with a, a beat up old chip brush. But the, this is so small, I need to use something small, but I'm using something pretty stiff and pretty much about the same width of everything that I need to do. To get my groove on, I'm gonna start with uh, this piece, which is at the bottom. Holding my brush almost flat to the surface. <laughs> 